We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome to Pod Maverick. I'm Kirk Henderson, editor in chief over at MavsMoneyBall.com. Joined as always by fellow editor and co-host here, Josh Bo. How you doing tonight, Josh? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> we're, we're all I'm trying all... to make it to the rest or to the end of the regular season. Apologies to everyone listening. I obviously don't sound like myself. I'm pretty sure I've got like a sinus infection because it's April in North Texas, and that means if you have bad sinuses or bad sinus issues, you you die. Like uh, the the Texas air and pollen and all that good stuff is just, whoo, it's doing a number on me, but I'm here. I normally get beat up in October, but I started getting allergy shots and they have helped me immensely. <sighs> need to need to follow your lead. It's shocking how well they work. Shout out to uh, Chaz for a, a, a $3 tip to start the show. That's really quite incredible. The the tipping going on in this these shows as of late are really cracking me up. It's very appreciated by Josh and I. So we're coming to you. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks just won their like 11th straight game, uh, 111 and 92, crushing the Heat. The ESPN broadcast had it, it was kind of pathetic. Like I didn't Mavericks, watch it. I watched the Mavs broadcast. Oh, you did because oh, so it was it was an ABC game. So ah, uh, so 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 the the, the <laughs> a- ABC ESPN crew, JJ Redick, um, Doris, uh, I want to say it was Mike Green too, really tried to make it interesting and that's what you're supposed to do okay it's not a it's not an anti-mavs bias you're supposed to try to make this interesting the mavericks beat the heat from pillar to post i don't care that the heat got down by eight it was a matter of the mavericks being like oh yeah we can just dominate the heat because we're bigger than they are and that's what happened and they won i mean this was this was a workmanlike performance i was a little annoyed they let the the heat come within eight but damn it the Dallas Mavericks are good. You should feel great about the team right now. And if you don't, what the hell's wrong with you? I'm having a great time. What's going on? Yeah, that was, I mean, the first half was, I mean, they were really, I mean, I know well, this, the, the deficit was only, I think, 25. And we've seen the Mavericks get bigger leads in other games. But just the way that game was flowing, I mean, they were really kicking their asses in the first half. I think it was just the way that they were winning. Like, you know, the Mavericks weren't, going nuts from from the three-point line they did a little bit early yeah. Luca kind of went nuts early but they only finished 34 percent from three like they dominated this game on the defensive end like they the heat just had nothing nothing on, on, nothing like if you're someone who only watches mavericks games you probably think bam at is like the most overrated player in the nba because the mavericks have turned him into a pumpkin in these two games he only had eight points tonight he was three of 13 and nothing looked close. Like it wasn't like just like ah, he was just missing some some easy ones. Like nothing he did looked comfortable. Like they made him uncomfortable the whole game. Um, 
Jimmy Butler only took eight shots. And I want to say he didn't take that many shots in the last game they played, and he only scored 12 points. Like, that's the difference in this game. The Heat, I mean, the Mavericks defense has obviously turned a corner. They're pretty awesome now. But Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo combined for 20 points, and Luka and Kyrie combined for, what am I looking at, like 50, like 60, 50-something, 50 uh, 54 points, I think, if my math is right. Like, <laughs> like they dominate. Like, the Stars dominated and the defense dominated, and that's what the Mavericks have been doing for, like, the last month. So here's the fun part about what I've been noticing lately. Luca, the the formula is like Luca goes out in the first quarter, kicks the shit out of you. Luca looks crappy in the third quarter. Kyrie brings him home in the fourth quarter. That's kind of been the formula for a while. If you're if you're looking at the Mavericks box score, um, Tim Legler talks about how he really likes how Luca goes out and doesn't feel out the game. He just kind of takes it to the team. Two games in a row, we've seen Kyrie Irving do that. And teams look very confused <laughs> when Kyrie is is pre- not uh, pressing is not the right word when he is asserting himself in the first quarter, and and in the first half quite candidly, yeah. and and I just like how this team has the ability to mix it up, to muck it up, to come at you from nine different ways. It's really really fun to watch right now. I, I yeah, I mean, p- playing the Heat is usually a chore. And they dismantled the Heat. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, like I don't. Again, they got it down to eight. Kevin Love, the, the walking just for men commercial, is out there hitting threes because Luca's farting around. I don't fucking care. Luca's just <laughs> locked in in a big game. He's not giving yeah. up that many threes to Kevin Love in a big game. Also, Kevin Love isn't playing in 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 the Western Conference where the men play. Um, just yeah. I mean, the Mavericks took their foot off the gas in the in, yeah. the, in the second half. Like that's just that's just what happened. Um, and it was the second night of a back to back. I mean, it was second night of back to back for both teams. Yes, that's true. So, I mean, I don't, you know, the Heat looked sluggish in the first half. Mavericks looked a little sluggish in the second half. Like that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, the Heat ran a lot of zone in the second half, and the Mavericks basically didn't run offense. Mm-hmm. Um, they and then they're like, oh, we have PJ, <laughs> yeah, PJ yeah, Washington, who's yeah. special. Like PJ must have been a guy. I, I have no idea. I would, I might be interested enough to go look at his high school tape. But if you're like, that's the kind of thing where it's like, oh, we got to go, we got to go play zone against this unbelievable score. And PJ probably just ran around the middle of a zone hitting ugly looking 10 footers that just fell every time. I, I love watching PJ operate in the middle of the floor. I know that's where he drives, but it's like when he catches the ball in the middle Especially of the, the floor. Zone. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, love it. And they've got the dunker in the short corner. And that's, mm-hmm. it makes me feel good because like, that's what we learned, Kirk. In that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Like that's how you beat a two three zone is you get you get one of your bigs uh, flashes to the free throw line the other one is on the short corner you pass it into the middle and then you go from there you yeah, that, hit that little free throw line jumper you hit the dump off to the big like, it is killing me that you're saying this this is the, it is the only reason I was one of two seniors on my high school basketball team and we had a legitimate seven footer that played at Colorado State and people I would be in the short corner and I would just sort of throw it up in the middle of the lane for Stewart to go get, and he would score baskets. It's, it's, and I, was that, the middle, I was the middle of the floor free throw line guy. I said, Josh, Josh operating from the middle. I love it. And, and I just, this is a sort of game to where it, you know, we're talking about it last night. We talked about the Charlotte game for, for less than we've talked about this game in the entirety of the show. This game was so much more fun because I, I think the heater actually pr- pretty yeah, feisty. Not bad. <laughs> Like, like oh, Hornets suck. Like, the Heat are feisty, and they're going to be interesting come playoffs. Like, Bam is such an interesting defender to go against. Um, and the Mavericks just made it look like they weren't even there. Yeah. The only, I mean, yeah, it, it was it was impressive. Um, the Mavericks dominated the paint again. Mm. 48 points in the paint to 36 for Miami. Um, Miami shot 6 of 12 in the restricted area, 12 of 31 in the paint outside the restricted area. Um, that's fantastic yeah uh and miami likes to score in the i don't well i don't know i'm not gonna say that i don't know if miami likes to score in the paint but i mean yeah, it gets one nba teams like to score yeah. closer to the basket right right yeah so Basketball it's good teams it like to score closer <laughs> to the basket yeah so they did good the only the only issues really were you know they took their foot off the gas uh, in the second half luca ran out of steam uh and they got beat on the offensive boards a little bit but other than that like i mean they had eight steals and eight blocks 16 stocks 
I mean, their block steal numbers for the last like three weeks have been mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. out of this world. PJ had two steals and a block. Jones had two steals and two blocks. Uh, Gafford had a steal, three blocks. Kyrie had two steals. That's your starting lineup. Like that's just the and- Heat had four stocks, and they have got Bam Adebayo, who's you know presumably one of the best defenders in the NBA. And I know it's not all stock. Like steals and blocks is not how you define a good defender. Um, but man, it helps. Mm. Boy, does it help. And and here's and I'm going to make a little bit of a controversial statement. We're we're nine minutes into the show. Okay. Luka Doncic played like shit in the second half. Is that controversial? That's no, but it, the people don't like it when you say stuff that's mean about Luka. He took too many threes. He took too many bad shots. He was just he Luka when he's having a good time. Luka gets steals and blocks. Luka's an active defender. Luka didn't have any of that tonight. He was getting saved by by Maxi Kleba, by Josh Green, by Derek Jones Jr. There were numerous possessions in that third quarter where I really thought the Heat could have got further into the Mavericks. But that Mavericks defense, you know, the the block Gafford had, Maxi and Gafford had some blocks in that third quarter. It was like, oh, my God. And, you know, we had a lot of uh, what I'm getting hit up with now, and I don't really care, uh, Maxi slander, which – when earlier in the year, when Maxi Kleber did in fact look like a corpse, we were pointing out how he looked like a corpse. And now he just, he looks like a different player. I mean, it's, it's six games, six or eight games in a row now where, I mean, again, I don't care if he doesn't score now because he's so fucking active on defense. It's great. So he has seven blocks in the month of April. He had one, two, three. He had five in the entire month of March. That's a feel thing because I mean he is covering ground side to side in a way that he did that he wasn't doing. I, I just <clears throat> he's doing the thing where he's helping on drives and then they're dumping it off to the guy that's open that he's helping off of, and then he's getting back to that guy and contesting well. I mean, yeah, that's when it's like okay, he's moved like he's moving like he should like we expect him to move like his feet. He's got quick feet. I said that after the Charlotte game. I'll say it again tonight. Yeah. Like he's moving his feet really well. Um, and yeah, I'm seeing shades of that 2022 playoff run, Maxi. I mean, he doesn't. He's still not really hitting shots. Um, he's not getting as many shots, but that's okay. I think at this point, you know, because there's a difference now. Because in 2022, he was your closer. Like I mean, they closed pretty much every game in the playoffs with him, and they've been doing that basically since Kristaps Porzingis was traded away from the team, he doesn't need to be the closer anymore. Like he can just be a guy that comes off the bench and and helps, you know, when you've got Gafford and when Derek Lively gets healthy, like they have options now. And that's kind of what we've been screaming about for like the last four years is it's like, it's not that we don't think Maxi can be a positive contributor to this team. It's just like, why does he have to have the entire pressure of the sh- defense on his shoulders? Cause it felt like if he wasn't playing well, the defense wasn't playing. They just asked him to do too much. They yep. asked him, like, he had to be their best wing. He has defender. to cover to the pitch. rim and yeah. the perimeter. Yeah, it's like it's too much for, you know, he was an undrafted free agent. Like, he's you're overextending him. Now he comes off the bench, and, and you don't expect him to be the linchpin every minute he's on the floor. I mean, you're seeing him look a little bit more comfortable. And yep. I think that I don't, I think, I don't think that's a coincidence. All right, we're going to go to a quick break now. Thank you so much for hanging out here during the show. Uh, those of you who are watching on the live stream, if you could go ahead and give this thing a like if you're down there. Uh, well, might as well hit subscribe. Josh and I do these after every show. Not going to do another live show tonight. I'm tired. I really want to watch Shogun with my wife. And with the playoffs ahead of us, um, Josh and I are, are we're already gearing up for playoff mode. We might rest ourselves the next several days because – the, the amount of work we will do during the playoffs is is because we like doing this. This is what we do it for. Um, but, you know, would really appreciate it if you subscribed. Anybody watching on the video feed later, uh, please leave a comment out in the, in the main comments under the video. Um, we did, um, let's see here, and anybody listening on the audio stream, uh, go ahead and, and please leave us a review. You know, if anybody wants to shoot me an email or a DM, I tend to talk to just about everybody. One of the things I, I want to point out to you guys, uh, just, just a note, like Josh and I, Josh is a, a trained journalist. I am not. Uh, what we do here um, is for fan community stuff. We like doing it because of the fans. Um, we we like talking basketball with people who like basketball. That's the whole point of this. It was 
a big reason why I got into this because I had something to say, but I'm no different or no better than anybody else. And so if you want to, you want to talk hoops with me, please do. I like, I like hearing about it. Um, and now if you could, uh, listen to our audio ads and then, um, we will be right back. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Okay, Josh, I had a, a quick thing that I wanted to do real quick. Um, a couple, Eric in the chat noted that our, our thumbnails on the, the videos before we go live and on the YouTube stream are up. Quick shout out to my friend Mason Goss, who has been making these for me the last several, um, probably like the last four games now. Uh, so shout out to Mason for helping us out with those. He likes making the thumbnails. We're very appreciative of him. Uh, Josh and I joke that we should have a producer, but we don't really make enough money to pay anyone so it's kind of hard to do that sort of thing but uh man all right uh this is oh shout out to uh to travis in the chat he says what's your advice to making it through a playoff run with a four-month-old um here's the thing travis what i've learned about my life is that very rarely does everything work at once if the mavericks are playing well my home life or my work life is usually garbo (laughs) (laughs) it's just it's just kind of the way it goes. Uh, so ask your wife and 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 pray. And and man, it'll be it'll be something else. All right. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. We did have another tip from appear now, appear later. Uh, he says, beat Miami. Thanks so much for that tip, my friend. We really appreciate that sort of thing from you guys. Um, and Josh and I may start a, a sequence kind of during the playoffs where we answer questions specifically that that are tied to tips. Um you know, it's it's just another. I don't want to make this about the money, but it does help Josh and I, and, and makes it worth our while. All right, what else should we talk about with regards to this game? Because we talked about the starters. I really loved the scoring distribution. Did you see that on the box score? Yeah, all five starters in double digits. Um, that's pretty cool. That doesn't happen a lot <clears throat> for this team. I thought Jones. Jones was really good tonight. Really good. Um, and if if Bam Adebayo hurt him. I'm going to be so yeah. fucking angry. That didn't look good. Did um, not look good. I, thankfully, I, I don't know if it makes a difference, but it's his, it's not his shooting shoulder. Right. Um, but yeah, like that shoulder stuff, like not to go some of all fears, worst case scenario, but like Julius Randle just. That's right. This whole season because of a shoulder injury that just couldn't get better. And then they had to do surgery. So obviously we don't know how bad it is. And shoulders are, are, are weird. Like, those are the kind of injuries where the guy can kind of walk walk off the floor. Obviously, they can walk off because yeah, shoulder. But you know, so you can't really tell. You know, there's not a lot of limping. Like you, you just don't really know until you do tests and MRIs. And hopefully, uh, he'll be okay. Because yeah, I mean, he's he's playing really well. And I mean, he's his insertion in the starting lineup is part of the catalyst that turned the season around uh, with his defense and his ability to guard point of attack and get around screens. And tonight against the Heat, like. He missed almost all of his threes, but he made almost most of his twos. And like he was driving the basket off closeouts. And it's like if a role player on this Mavericks team can attack closeouts when, when Luke is passing the ball out or Kyrie's passing it out, that's gold. And yep. You can do that yep. And and one of the things that I like about him in particular, Derek Jones Jr., is that uh, for a team for for a league full of athletes. Guys still seem surprised when he's at the rim and levitating and like he still continues to go up 
and he dunks sometimes from really far out. Guys don't know how to judge him when he's attacking, but part of that is because of Luca and Kyrie. They have to stay attached to those two, and so he just gets a little bit more clearance, you know, when he's going to the rim. I, I just I, I like watching him play offense. It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I like watching him play defense. I like watching him go around screens, and that was uh, you got a nice contrast between the 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 good and the bad of going around screens since uh, Josh Green came back. To what do you think of Josh's game? I I liked. I like his freneticism. He got an offensive tip today. He was playing some kind of all over the place defense, but at the same time, you you today was a lot of why he he's not going to be in the playoff rotation. Uh, he might get some minutes. I but... think he'll get time. I think he'll yeah. get opportunities, but he's not going to be one of the first three guys called. No, I don't think so. Right now, he'll have to earn. Like he'll have to prove himself. Which he may. He could. Yeah, which he may. He could. Um especially if they need the shooting because he he is he has been shooting the ball well and with PJ and, and Derek Jones Jr their three point shooting kind of comes and goes from game to game um i thought he was okay for, you know i mean he missed basically a month so i i didn't expect him to look great um the first three pointer he took was like <clears throat> it looked like a guy that hasn't played in a real you know a sure. real game. do you remember um Dennis Green's rookie uh summer league experience when they had um Nicholas Brasino and Dorian Finney Smith <laughs> yeah. shooting threes and it was just like the ball would hit the back of the rim and make this horrendous noise. That's what that one was. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. And you know, defensively did he was okay. Um I but yeah, it was just cool to see him on the floor because mm. you know he played instead of Jaden Hardy for the most part. Uh, Jaden didn't get into the game until garbage time and say what you will about Hardy and green, but it's just, you know, I, I lean towards size, you know, so he's a bigger body and it didn't, you know, the, the way that they were able to keep size on the floor, it felt like throughout the entire game, uh, you know, that was welcome to see, even if he didn't have my, 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 my workout buddy, Josh McSwain in the chat, um, is, is loves to make fun of me for my for my Josh Green takes. But I will tell you, given the chance to be mad at Josh Green versus Jaden Hardy, I will take Josh Green every day of the week. I just, I can't handle Jaden Hardy's mistakes. Josh Green's mistakes come from enthusiasm. Jaden Hardy's <laughs> mistakes come from the fact of where it's like there's a sign going off in his head where he's like, it's Jaden Hardy time. And he just takes a step back because he can't drive around a post. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. But um, so yeah, I mean, it's a good thing he's back before the regular season. These next two games will be important to see if they can ramp him up, even if the the stars don't play. But I'm <clears throat> I'm gonna be very curious. This, huh? This is an incredible stat. I'm sorry to stop you. No, Derek no, I'm, Jones I'm, Jr. was negative one. Every other player on the Mavericks roster was a plus. And that's that's why plus minus is so weird because yeah. if you told me he was the one negative, I would. I sure. Be a liar. I mean, that's got to be that third quarter. He probably yeah. did during that stretch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but yeah, right. otherwise, I mean, you know, Luca took some terrible shots in the second half. Uh, that was like the really only negative on offense. He only took what I had it up here earlier. He took one shot in the restricted area <clears throat> this whole game. Only took three shots, six shots in the paint outside the restricted area. Took 15 threes, um, only made four. I mean, he looked like, you know, he looked like on the second half of the back-to-back. So nothing to be too worried about. But I do think they need to get Luka. I don't know if he wants to take a day off in these next two games. But the Mavericks have clinched. Like, they're not going anywhere. They're fifth. Well, do we talk about that? Like, like I, I think Luka needs to rest too, but I don't know what game. I would kind of rather rest him against Thunder. I would rather get one more win just because I would. I like, I don't know, I just want him to get one more win. <laughs> okay, it doesn't. Yeah, just a, nothing. Matt, like they're. Close. I guess they're going to beat Detroit. They can't go. I mean, they could technically go up if, if Los Angeles loses every game, um, but that'd be tough. Uh, you know, you can't really expect that. Um, but you know, they can't go lower than five. They can't go higher than four. So there's nothing really to manipulate with the standings. Uh, I I think they should get get him a day off. Um, much like they just played the schedule they played recently was just crazy because of the having to reschedule that uh mm-hmm. like they just played five and seven nights a lot of travel you know going from tech california to texas to california back to texas then to the east coast uh like they've they've traveled you know they've hit both coasts in about a week that's not easy uh, that's right so you know they could 
I would prefer to see that, you know, I don't know when they're going to do it. Maybe they do it the last game of Thunder because it's a road game. You know, maybe you want to give the last home game, give the fans something to watch. Um, so I don't know when they do it, but I think he should get a night. He should get a night off. But I don't know if he wants to because, I mean, I think he wants. I think he likes playing, but I mean, right now. Playing, it's, it's, but he wants to win MVP too, I think. Like, not saying he's trying to put that above the team goals, but like, he's a competitive dude. Like, he, is. he wants to be the best. And I think he knows that he's really close. Um, yeah. So we'll see. That's a good point. I I, I don't just, know if two uh, games matter, but I think you know he'll try. I mean, these last two games though, and, and this is where I have my other NBA contacts that I spend a lot of time talking to that are not Mavs people been checking in more. Um Luca doesn't look like how he Luca <laughs> This is the first time in a long time I've thought he's looked heavy. I don't know why. What do you think? Yeah, I thought he looked a little heavy too. And that's like, you know, that's just, that's a, yeah, that's, you know, he didn't go in the paint and he just, he couldn't get by anyone tonight, mm -hmm. um, which even when he's, he's always had that ability, even with, you know, not necessarily having blazing speed because of just the way he can manipulate yeah. the floor and the heat were not having it. They were not really buying on his pump fakes or anything like that. So that was part of it um right. he'd also have a pretty good defense you know that's also part of it but he just he was he had no inclination to go in toward the basket tonight or he tried and he couldn't get there so you know if they need to get his legs fresh uh i'm all for it because i mean he's I mean, that's what i mean right what's he's how many minutes has he played he's, he's playing, playing he's playing a much. lot he he just he looks tired so it's like can, can we get the guy can we put him in the cryo chamber like the mavs did in 2011 and let some of these like his knees were so banged up the other game. Like, is there yeah. anything he can do? Just because, again, like, like I saw S -S -S SLD said, weight talk, yay. And it's like, again, it's a perception, it's not an actual thing. But when people that aren't Mavericks fans are like, oh, he looks different than he did two weeks ago, he does. Like, he does look different than he looked two weeks ago. Like, we have access to all the Getty photos. You pull this stuff up for games and you go back and look, you're like, man, that dude looks like he's. He's tired. Like it's 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 a long ass season. So what do you what do you do here? Yeah, yeah. He's averaging 30, almost thirty eight minutes a game. That's right. Well, I mean, this is a great point from from VIP me in Europe. Lucas played a ton of games from the NBA, to national team games, Olympic games, and all this stuff. He's played a ton. He's played a ton, and he's going to continue to play a ton because the Olympics come right after this. Yeah. So, well, <sighs> yeah. but I mean, again, he still was a positive for the most part on the floor. Like he oh, had, great. yeah. Yeah. yeah, he had nine assists, only three turnovers. Mavericks only had seven turnovers in this game, by the way. He had 15. Um, so that was yeah. a big, big reason why the Mavericks won. So, you know, it's not, we're not like he's out of shape or something wrong with him. No, like, nothing no, wrong. Yeah, he's yeah. just, it's the end of a long season. They just played yeah. five and seven nights. Like they've played, I mean, how many games has Luca played this year? Uh, Luka, he's played uh, 60, I think, was tonight 70. I'm going to go tell you because I'm going to basketball reference live on the show. 70 games. 70 yeah. games. Luca last played 70 games his rookie year. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is a big fucking deal. It is. It is a big deal. And I think he that was, you know, after, especially after last season. Remember, they kind of started where they were just automatically resting him in back-to-backs. I hated that. I, yeah. They have That was. Sure. And it's not that he has. Like, I mean, again, you go back. Last year, he played 66 games, so that's missing 16. The year before that, he played um, 65 games, missing 17, uh, which that was a shortened season, I think, 2021-22. All this stuff starts to like, blur together after a certain period of time. Um, neither here nor there. I'm, just, I'm glad to see him play a lot, and I'm glad to see the Mavericks not resting him. Can you filibuster for a second? Can I talk? Can <laughs> I have to get talk? up? I, I have to get up for one second. I'm so sorry. That's fantastic. No, no, that's that's not a problem. Um, the you know it's it's just to sort of briefly dip into the MVP debate because this is something that's been kind of raging on 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 Twitter and on social media. Um, the longevity that Luke has played with this year, particularly if he finishes and he plays the next two games, is pretty pretty interesting. It's something that I am um, very interested in as to where he's going to round out with the vote. Um, I'm gonna be in. You know, the the MVP ballots are not cast until after the regular season's over, which is how it ought to be. But I do earnestly think now, after kind of having some conversations today, that 
I'm hoping for a weird vote. You know, friend of the program and enemy of Mavs fans, Matt Moore, has pointed out to me repeatedly over the last couple of weeks that votes tend to consolidate, consolidate around someone regardless of um, kind of what's going on with the discussion. It just sort of happens naturally even before we knew media votes, um, which is, I think, part of the problem with how people vote these days. I want a weird vote. Let if Jokic is going to win the MVP, let him win it with like 61% of the votes or 58% of the votes because it's not as clear cut as people are acting or as media voters are acting like it's going to be. And while I'm here and while we're, we're kind of talking about my friend Matt, I want you guys to think about this. There's MVP voters like Matt. I don't even know if he has a vote this year. And then there's MVP voters like Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith doesn't fucking watch basketball. And has basically said Luca is not an MVP candidate because of, I don't know. So if you want to argue, if you want to kind of take these voters in mind, would you rather be able to, to kind of argue directly with an MVP voter like Matt, who cares enough to argue with you as fans? I think that's really something, okay? It's not easy to do this sort of stuff. Fan engagement is not easy. Matt has 150,000 followers, and people tell him he sucks and issue him death threats and act all sorts of ridiculous about him. But he cares enough about the MVP vote to have a discussion. It's very interesting to me. All I'm going to say. The 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 MVP vote is something that as I sort of... Um, I think it's going to be one of these things where Jokic is going to win, and then I think in five or six years, we're going to be like, how did Luka not win? Because Luca will, with the team that the Mavericks have finally figured out, and this is, you know, this is just one of these things that kills me about being a Mavs um, blogger slash writer slash podcast, I want to call us for a um, website and for a, a kind of cynical fan fan website, which is what Mavs Moneyball would be classified as. I think that's fair. We're cynical because we've, you know, the, the whole idea of, of what Josh and I have been doing since Luca became a Maverick was, it was a really bizarre, it's a really bizarre concept we came up with. It was, it, it's a really, it was, what if, what if we surrounded Luka Doncic with really good basketball players? What if we did that? What if we were like, Hey, Luka Doncic, is a good basketball player, but we didn't ask him to to be basketball Sisyphus and constantly push the rock up the fucking hill over and over again while getting crapped on by people who didn't watch basketball. And so, you know, Rob Mahoney, my former boss and friend of the show also, wrote an article right that came out right before trade deadline, which essentially boiled down to the Mavericks know what the formula is now, and they're going to... Um, they're going to figure out how to plug holes and or plug that formula with players that fit. Less than like four days later, they trade for Gafford, they trade for Washington. And look what happens when you have good players around Luka Doncic. His assists go up. The Mavs win a lot of games. This is incredible. Okay. Sorry. That's my sort of filibuster while Josh was handling. That was great. I heard most of it. Yeah. That was awesome. Good for you on the spot. Thank you for, for doing that. I appreciate it. But you're I'm I'm with you. I'm totally with you. I don't even have that much more to add other than I think kind of what I talked about yesterday with MVP is that like we said, it's it's such a narrative based award that you're just gonna run into people that don't like like so, players. And I think that's gonna be something uh that happens with Luca and I think they'll get around it because they're gonna win and hopefully they win in the playoffs and and then We'll look back, and yes, if he doesn't win MVP this year, maybe it's going to look silly, but he's also 25, and I don't think you should get up in arms. He's not winning MVPs until we get to, like, he's 28, 29. I, I want to answer I mean? this question because yeah, go ahead. This, is, this is a great question from Mars SpaceX. Dude, you guys think Luca would be this good when he was drafted? I spent the entirety of the 2017-2018 Mavs season, so before he was drafted, basically begging for Luka Doncic, and my hope – my hope was that he would be an all NBA caliber player by the time he was in his late twenties. Luca has won five all he will win. He will be on five all NBA teams before he turns 26. Yeah. Luca is. We don't properly contextualize that Luca is going to be, he's going to go down as one of the 15 best basketball players ever. If he keeps this up. 
if, if he, he plays long enough, yeah, he'll be for another five. Him. Yeah, for another five to seven years, he is he's one of the best fifteen players ever. He is a first ballot Hall of Famer today. And anybody that argues that does not know ball and also doesn't know that the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame accounts for overseas countries. It's the Basketball Hall of Fame, not the <laughs> NBA Hall of Fame. People don't know that sometimes, and it's funny when people get worked up about it. But uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So what were we talking about before you left? We were kind of talking about a, a number of different smaller things, kind of around the fringes. Um, I think we were talking about like Luca's second half, resting Luca. I think we, we can 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 we can we throw a bone to the team here? Yeah. If Olivier Maxence Prosper plays, it, it, fans are going to go crazy for him this summer. And he goes out on the floor, and he's so freaking big, just another huge person. I get it. I I am salivating with everyone. That's all. I'm just. I just wanted to throw that out there. Do you wonder if they're going to do the kind of what the Nuggets did with Bruce Brown and Christian Braun, uh, Brown? Uh, like, because Jer- Derek Jones Jr. is on a one year veterans minimum. Mm-hmm. He has probably played himself into a, a nice contract and he has not had a lot of. Nope. He, he probably needs money. Yeah. Yeah. He, he has not had a lot of multi year contracts since he's been like almost a one year minimum guy most of his career. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the Mavericks cap situation, if it gets too high, I don't know if they're going to bring him back. I wonder if internally there is some thinking like maybe Prosper is the year two, maybe not the full replacement, but maybe they can he can absorb some of the minutes that they would lose if Jones gets a bigger payday from another team. It's going to be interesting because the thing about taking a minimum deal is that once you take that minimum deal, coming back out of that is is very difficult, regardless of what you've done. Um, because I think the Mavericks can look at this and, and frankly say to him, does this happen unless you're on this team? And he would probably say, no. you'd probably say no. So I, I'm, I'm going to be fascinated there. You know, like the, the, the chat is talking about the, the front office moves over the past year and, and, you know, the, they've made some interesting ones because we're not even talking about the fact that they got XM next year already. And yeah, that's locked in. He's the team option. I think. So. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just it's really something. It's really something. Um, well, all right, we're at like 35 minutes. Is is there is there anything else we should talk about? Uh, I don't know. I think we hit everything. I can't I don't know. I got nothing. I'm I'm MVP you. exhausted. You I am you, too. No, I didn't you really talk about the gap it. Well, no, I know, but you said the things I wanted to say that I'm too tired to say. <laughs> like, yeah. I appreciate it. Well, because here's the thing. Luca will tell you. Luca wants two things. In the basketball sense, he wants two things. Neither of those. Woo. You okay? Yeah, I, like I was going to tell you what the two things were, and then the internet god said, no, you're not. <laughs> the 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 three body problem aliens. We're like, <laughs> I didn't know if it was you, if it was me. I couldn't tell because the chat wasn't really. I'm good sorry, that's never happened before on this stream. Like, I have, I have some, some, some goofy internet, but that was something else. I really apologize about that, guys. But Luca <laughs> wants two things. The first thing that he wants more than anything else is he wants an Olympic medal for Slovenia. He's talked about this. That's that's I think the single most important thing to Luca in the basketball sense right now. Second most important thing, Larry O'Brien Trophy. Yep. I don't think he cares about MVP. You don't think so? I think he'll take it. <laughs> I just think he wants to be the best, and however that comes. But I think you're right about the priorities for sure. Like well, especially the really, there was a really good tweet today, and I'm going to circle through my timeline as I talk here from a long time uh, Chad Stanton. He's a he's a follower of the podcast, listens every now and again. Follow him on Twitter, and he said, honestly, I think a big part of what we're seeing in the press, not wanting to give give the MVP to Luca is because they feel like he's already had a pretty charmed NBA life as is. And I think that's a fantastic take. It vexes some people that Luca has not had to, had to, he's not uh, the tribulations and trials that he've had have mainly been in the form of the Los Angeles Clippers. It's not that things have come easy. That's not what I mean, but Luca has delivered time and again, 
And there's not been much of a chance to say Luca didn't do what he was supposed to do outside of the, could he stop yelling at the refs? Could he stop, you know, taking so many bad threes, yada, yada. It's, it's like a, you're criticizing, you're criticizing how great he is. Like, it's like, you're criticizing how he's being great. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think I, I want to say, I don't know if I talked about it on this podcast or, or on Twitter or on the, on the site, but it's also like, there's no, like, he's so good so quick that the traditional sports media narratives where it's like the rising star or like, you know, the bell curve, it didn't really exist. Cause after his rookie year, he's been up here. He's, he's reached almost the pinnacle in terms of individual performance and production. Uh, like there was no warming up period. Like, you, you know, Jokic was a second round pick. It took him a couple of years. So, so same thing for Shea Gilders Alexander, although he was a top pick, but it took him, couple of years because it normally takes guys a couple of years unless you're Luca or you're LeBron or you're Tim Duncan. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why that list he's on of like how many people have made first team all NBA in their first four or five seasons is only like three guys. Like these guys don't come around that often. You just don't see guys enter the league and just instantly become one of the five best players in the league, which is basically kind of what he is. And so that's also made it so it feels like, we take it for not, not saying we, but the collective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for yeah. Granted, because it's like, yeah, he's this good. Of course he is. And it's like, but but you understand, like he's been that good the whole time. Like it's not like I think people forget that, and I think it's you just kind of assume, and you almost you. It's like ah, Luca. You think of him as like this fifteen year veteran because of the way he he plays because he's so good so right away. And it's like no, he's twenty five. This is his sixth season. Like in other. MVPs, their sixth season, they're like just now starting to become like regular all stars and stuff. Like, uh-huh. this just doesn't happen that often. And I think it just shifts the perception a bit and throws everything off because of how good and how quickly he was. And that's not his fault. Like, what's he supposed to be? Be worse so that like people can can enjoy the rise of Luca more? No, he's going to kick ass as soon as he wants to because he's that good. I mean, that's why we screamed for him in the draft. That's why I thought he was right. the best NBA prospect to enter the draft since LeBron James. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. I've just, we're in uncharted territory. So I think it's understandable that if you're in uncharted territory, that things aren't following the plan, so to speak. You know what I mean? Narrative. I do. I do. All right. The last thing I want to touch on before we get out of here is I think we need to um, congratulate Kyrie Irving. He hit a roster bonus. I'm sorry, like a contractual bonus as, as part of him hitting a minimum of 50 games and the Mavericks winning 50 games. He gets a million dollars extra that changes the Mavericks cap situation heading into next year. Uh, which I mean, who cares? Not our problem though. I, I do expect um, CBA Mavericks, our man Scott uh, to, to do something with it at some point, just because he, just because he's that kind of guy. Um, I want to also put out there like pretty sure I'm on record being like, why the fuck did the Mavericks give this guy three years, $120 million? What are we doing? And if I didn't actually say that on record, everyone blight this from your memory, because I did <laughs> think it, Um <laughs> And he's been he's been nothing short of spectacular. Um, I tweeted this earlier today. In terms of like a single player, 2024 Kyrie Irving, so not necessarily 2023, meaning last year and then the first part of the year. He's been spectacular. He's been everything I could have hoped for and more. And I just really enjoy the process of watching him play. And you know, things could go go goofy here. Where the playoffs, lots of things happen. I just want to get that out there. And it's like the whole point is you're supposed to like this, like basketball, like the team. And I, I just I like watching Kyrie Irving play. I think with him, what's been really enjoyable so far. Well, it's all been enjoyable, but like what's really brought it home to me, and like trying to think back, like what's going on. It's like, <clears throat> like remember there was a time with Kyrie where like. He was legitimately one of the, I mean, he's still a very popular player, but he was legitimately like one of the most popular, well-liked, and he's obviously still well-liked by inside the league. But I'm talking like across the board, like nationally. Like this guy had a movie. He made a movie based off a character. He was in a commercial that everyone loved, Uncle Drew. Like remember yep. Uncle Drew? Like oh, yeah. there was a time, like basically up until uh, after he left, Cle- you know, right up until he left Cleveland. 
where I think he was universally one of the like most fun players in the league, one of the most well liked players in the league, uh, and everyone was like lining up to like get mm-hmm. some of Kyrie Irving like commercials and movies yeah. and, and shoe deals. I mean, his like, his shoe was the best selling Nike shoe. It's transferred over, I think, to Sab- who who is it? Sabrina's shoe now. It's yeah. the same shoe. It's just now a WNBA athlete wears it. Yeah. And like he was one of my favorite players. I remember. I don't remember a lot of specific games because I'm getting older and and stuff gets pushed out of my brain. I remember when LeBron came back for his second stint in Cleveland when Kyrie scored 53 points in San Antonio against Mm -hmm. the Spurs. Uh, The good, like those those Spurs teams that were still really good with Duncan and and Kawhi Leonard. And I always remember because it was so fun because again, he's never been a free throw merchant. Like he's always been a guy that gets up shots and when he goes to the rim, he doesn't try to get fouled. He tries to do those wild contorted yeah. layups. And he was doing that all game and he was hitting threes like nothing else. And he was just so fun to like, just aesthetically his game is so pleasing to the eye because it's not a lot of herky jerky, slow stop, get fouled, yeah. shoot 15 free throws. No, he's, he's, I'm going to get up buckets. I'm going to move the ball really fast up and down the floor. I'm going to try to make every mm-hmm. level I shoot. I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to get fouled and then throw something up. Like, when he goes in the paint, he's trying to score a bucket. He's not trying to get fouled, which, you know, say what you will about, you know, is that what he should be doing? I don't care. It's fun to watch. And, like, <laughs> obviously, some stuff happened after that. And it's, you know, people are going to say that, it, you know, it was like a media narrative against Kyrie. We don't have to get into it. No, he no, I, I, I sort of want to. I, I, I want to from this element, Josh. One of the things that Kyrie has shown while being in Dallas is there is a value to a smaller market. Okay. Oh, absolutely. That's why because he's not going anywhere. We're so happy that he's here that nobody cares about the stuff that isn't basketball. Now, there's some things he's done off the court here which probably deserve a lot more attention. I mean, the man gives away his money like a philanthropist. Um, I want to say it was Landon over at um God, what's Landon's site? The MFFL. Yeah, Mass Fans for Life wrote about it a little bit. We got a guy, Jason, writing about it. It's Kyrie is a guy that people are drawn to, full stop. And, you know, he's a little bit of an argument to be made in the modern world where it's like, I don't need to know everything about an athlete and what he's thinking. I don't want to know. I kind of want to watch my guy play some sports ball and go home and move along, and that's okay. And And in big markets, what happens, it's like, you know, could you imagine Michael Porter Jr. in a big art in a big media market with some of the shit that dude says? My God, he said some stuff the last couple of days on a podcast. Oh my I've God! Seen. And it's like, <laughs> and I don't know how that has not blown up yet. It just goes over because nobody cares. <laughs> but if you're in New Jersey, if you're in an East Coast media market up in the Northeast, that becomes a like a because there's, there's 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 just a talk radio thing, and it's like, I just I'm I'm glad Kyrie's here. I'm glad Kyrie's happy. I'm on record a lot saying I wasn't very thrilled about the trade. I was wrong. The track record, the track record was a track record. Track record record proves it. It's just, you know, Cowboy just said winning cures all. Yes, but also just like having a good time. The Mavericks weren't really great until February and really post trade deadline, or I'm sorry, post trade deadline. But I enjoyed the Kyrie. Like there was a five game stretch in January where Kyrie Irving at 31 years old played the best basketball of his career statistically. Like he, he's just been remarkable. And I, I, I don't know. I just want to highlight that a little bit. You know, we did a little Luke praise, a little Kyrie praise PJ Washington. Shout out to you. Just, I don't know. I'm having fun. And, and, and it's the highs game. are are high. And, and this is how I watch sports. When the highs are high, I'm, I'm ecstatic. When the lows are low, I'm just a manic lunatic. And that's also a uh, uh, shout out to PJ Washington's dunk in the first half. I don't mm. know if that two hander he had, He's been a little bit more floor bound in Dallas than he was in Charlotte. Not necessarily anything is his fault. I think it's just the way he's playing and his role is a little reduced. Because in Charlotte, he did whatever he wanted, so mm-hmm. he had more opportunities. But like he's got a, his like I'm I'm always surprised. Like his vertical is very nice. Like when he had that two handed dunk, his forehead was like almost even with the rim. It looked like like he can really get up there. And sometimes he doesn't get to showcase that because, you know, the Mavericks offense is putting him in spots where maybe he doesn't get to do that all the time. Uh, but I just want to shout out like he's, you know, he, he shows off his athleticism in the steals and blocks, but it was just like, he, he's a good dunker. I, in that's another thing that we've been asking the Mavs to do uh, 
for like what since Luke, they drafted Luca, like just give him athletes so that he can throw lobs and 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 make games look like uh, low Prouder games. Like uh, that's that's fun. Yes. Okay, so T Bone Disco asks if we're gonna have a live show tonight. Here's the thing, I gotta save some juice up, man. I am so tired. This baby, we have a baby at home. I've people know that. Um, Grant. Um, I never told. I don't think I've told people his name. I didn't tell it because then people would have thought that we named our baby after Grant Williams, which we did <laughs> not. Okay, my wife is related to uh, President Grant, General Grant. Um, but he has a double ear infection, so it's like I'm losing my mind. Uh, so I want to save this up for the for the playoffs. Um, we'll be we'll be back. Maybe I'll do one Friday. Uh, the Mavericks play Detroit. Maybe we'll hang out late. Who knows? We did a 50 minute podcast right t- tonight over this sort of game. Um, <laughs> we got one more tip to shout out to Mass to Fame. Ramadan Kyrie is different. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> it's like his Ramadan based stats are ludicrous. <laughs> It's so good. Like he was already playing well during it. Like he was still doing okay. But yeah. like, dude, he started seven of ten tonight, and like all of his shots were look just butter. Or yeah, like so he might be even better. He might be even better than he was for the last. Oh, two we years. got my man Henry, who's been telling me, you know, he's a big longtime Kyrie fan. He comes up here on the post show and he's like, You just wait, you just wait till these games matter. I haven't argued with him. Ain't wrong. <laughs> That's what I'll say. Yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, all right uh, i don't know what i'm gonna do for the rest of the night probably go read a book or something but i'm just i'm tired head over to mavs Moneyball. we'll see what we got going on over there i am badgering our staff for playoff based content everybody soak this stuff up it's supposed to be fun have fun when it's supposed to be fun thank you so much for uh spending part of your evening with us we will be back um the mavericks are now like five and oh and my he is risen shirt and yes do i i, I quite literally keep wearing it for um Superstitious for super. No, I definitely wash it. I stank. <laughs> um, okay, this has been Kirk and Josh. Everybody, be good. Thanks so much for your time. Go Mavs. <laughs>